there, bro? It so is in there. It is? Yeah. Fuck. Should be in there. We need Pearl in one. Yeah, I got her. Go back, bro. Wow. Dude, <laughs> already with your shit. Oh, dude. What was that you doing, bro? Are you good? Yeah. Good. good to see you, bro. How's the seat? Let's do some work. Oh, let's do some work. Hi, hey, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. I'll edit that. Dude, you look good, man. Look at you. You look lean. What's going on? Nah, man. You gotta get that. That's just. You being nice. I'm fat right now. This is called pizza and ice cream. Damn, mm -hmm. if that looked fat for me, bro, yeah, I'd be pizza happy. happy. <laughs> What's up with the shoulder? Same stuff. Bursitis, tendon pain, shoulder into the neck a little bit. What is it hurting with? Uh, overhead and stuff? Anything pressing, any pulling, any, any shoulder, just. Okay. I said tendon in the joint. Are you ready for this? Yeah. All, all right, brother, have a seat right here. It's a painful joint. That not as much, that's a little sore, but it's a little bit lower, like red. So all this right here? Yeah, so it's, oh, you're missing the spot, there you go. Okay. So all yeah. aside from the bursitis that you have, you're having some bicep tendonitis, dude. Yeah. That's part of the issue. And it's bothering you here too, right? You know me, man, I'm held together by duct tape. <laughs> duct tape? Yeah, I like Painful? A little bit. Yeah. Thumbs down for me, brother. Push up really hard. Uh, let's compare. Push up. Oh, this is way stronger, dude. Uh, dude, typical impingement syndrome with a rotator cuff that's caused by all the swelling that you have in the front, by the bursitis, the tendonitis. It's pinching onto your uh, supraspinatus, so just kind of be careful with that. You icy? Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I was for a while. Dude, part of the issue here is that your pec major, because it's such an internal rotator, it's very active and tight. So I have to loosen that thing up so it stops causing you to have a rolled in shoulder. Your shoulder sitting in the internally rotated position will compromise that impingement syndrome that you have even furthermore, dude. The deltoid will start taking its toll and pushing on that supraspinatus tendon here. You guys get that? <laughs> Break that down, take it. So, man, I'm gonna start working on this trap, okay? You're gonna have to really get in here. Essentially, when he's having an impingement syndrome with a rotator cuff in here, uh, he has dysfunctional movement here in the front and the lateral aspect. This back part compensates a lot. And uh, so the trap takes a huge toll because the supraspinatus comes from here, goes all the way to here, and it hooks to the lateral aspect, which is the outside of the shoulder. And so this starts taking all the load. So what we have to do is break it up some because he's building up a bunch of adhesions. Adhesions lead to abnormal bus muscle uh, movements, muscle firing, therefore muscle imbalance. And muscle imbalance would lead to an injury. Lack of blood flow, lack of pump, lack of strength, lack of gains. <laughs> Can't have that. It's a good he can't have that. Infraspinatus teres major minor. The lat starts to dip into the rotation of the glenohumeral joint. You definitely want to eliminate the amount of compensation that's being developed on that rear rotator cuff when you have dysfunctionality along the front part of the shoulder, AKA impingement syndrome of the rotator cuff, either caused by tendonitis, bursitis. I'm just, I'm going down that pathway of the bicep tendon which is where the tendonitis and the inflammation is. The impingement syndrome of the rotator cuff, which is a supraspinatus, is right here. So you wanna put some therapy on it to start healing it. I always preach about how important it is to get into the gym and destroy yourself, you know, and just go all in, man. But there's no way that a Ferrari would be able to perform without oil changes, without yeah. tune-ups, you know. Um, so, I preach. I say that to. I say, if, you, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do any type of resistance training or weightlifting, any type of bodybuilding or fitness, anything, any goal, right. you're gonna have bumps and bruises. It's not God did not intend for us to do what we do in the gym. Therefore, you need to take care of your body. You need to rehab. You need to see someone that can help you uh, put together a therapeutic regimen or something to keep you durable. Because the the one thing you don't want is to be out of the gym. That's like everyone's worst nightmare. Exactly. Just allow something to get to the point where, you know, it, it, 
keeps you out of the gym and, uh, and you can't train. So doing therapy, seeing somebody like Dr. J, uh, somebody that is you know, at an elite level is, is very important. Durability is the name of the game. It's a marathon, man. Yeah. That's the thing, Joey, that I've come to realize that a lot of these guys, they go in there and they kill themselves in the gym, man. Shoulders practically falling off and yeah. still overhead pressing 100, uh, 100 pound dumbbells. Yeah, that's it. The, the one thing I've learned over the past few years is to put my ego aside and start to train smarter in the sense that, you know, uh, higher volume, lowering the weight, uh, you know, or I'm, you know, not necessarily working around injuries, but not trying to, you know, further an injury. Over, trying, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Allowing something to kind of recover. And, so uh, be strategic with your workouts as far as, like, what makes it worse and what feels okay. Exactly. And focus more on, you know, it's, it's much more important. Uh, you know, I always say it's not how much you lift, it's how well you lift it. So being able to train with my muscle connection, being able to train to target an area, to be able to isolate a muscle and prevent yourself, let's say, from something like cheating. Like for example, if you're doing like a bicep curl and you're swinging the weight or you're leaning you know, in a certain way and you're incorporating too much shoulder instead of bicep, being able to isolate a muscle right, uh, is, is much more, you're doing that with a lighter weight because you'll see a guy with 100 pounds, right? And he's like, oh, he's swinging the weight. He's like, oh, I'm so strong. Yeah. But you see a guy doing half the weight, but doing it right. Who's going to get you know a better effect? I mean, they might both get the same growth, but guess who's going to be in here much more often and going to be sitting at home when they have an injury? Absolutely. And that's the point, yeah. right? To take care of your body for the long run, not for the short one. Two huge factors I think a lot of young kids, they neglect when it comes to training is their diet and their, their recovery and their rehabilitation and things like this. But and all the greats really like invest time and money into recovery. Absolutely. I'm going to stick a mean elbow back here, Joey. <laughs> Great. Bear with me, brother. Ooh. Again, when there's uh, impingement syndrome on that rotator cuff, that pec major really gets hyperactive. It starts internally rotating that shoulder, rolling it in. So you gotta break it up, man. You gotta break it up. Ooh. And who like Joey Swole to be able to take that pain? Stretching out of the shoulder, extremely important. I like to do two angles of the pec major. This is the clavicular angle. And then at an angle here, sternal, for all you impingement syndrome patients, just be careful because you'll pinch on that. Is that too much, Joey? No, all right. No, no, okay, good. So the patient feels good, then cool. I'll do a little bit of soft tissue while I'm keeping it down with my knee. Good job. Then I'll do some internal and external rotator uh, stretches as well, which is very important, not just extension. Push up for me that way, roll up and relax. My man, good job, good job. Push up one more time and relax. Good. You gonna do it the other way, bro? Push. Okay. Push up now and relax. Good. Push up again. And relax. Strong, strong. Cup your ear. And I always like to do the, the adjustment of the glenohumeral joint and just popping some bones in here. Relax the delt. Ooh, that was amazing, brother. You okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Sheesh, brother. Let's have you go on your stomach now. I'm gonna get you adjusted. I'm gonna do some low back stuff and good crap. Y'all, that's good. <laughs> Much needed, right? Yes, sir. And guys, if you want to increase your low back mobility, uh, when your hip mobility, your squat, your deadlift, increasing the amount of strength, blood flow, flexibility, you go for a few things. You go for the lumbar spine, paraspinal, which is here, the QL, which is right there. And then that's going to hook on to the hip. PSIS is here. Then we'll also get the glute medius. The external rotators of the hip so the piriformis, that gets too tight, it'll start causing sciatic pain uh, symptoms, which is sharp shooting pain, numbness and tingling down the leg, thigh, the lower leg sometimes. And I'd also get the TFL, which is very important. Also, another thing, hip flexor, very, very important. Stretch that thing out. Now the quad will hook from the hip too. So tight quad can also deviate that hip imbalance a little bit more. 
but we re diff definitely, definitely got to start uh, improving the flexibility of that hip flexor. do the chiropractic adjustment again we work on the muscle we need to align the spine and the spine is not aligned then you don't want to be off balance bear with me joy good now let's have you on your side face me this way to your left though. all right just this we're gonna bring it up let me get you closer brother right hold that right there this one down. I'm gonna push here and push here. Bear with me on this one. Good, dude. Let's get the other side. I'm gonna push here. Bear with me. Good. Cool. Good job. Face up. Good. My man. Dude, you survived. Welcome <laughs> back, baby. <laughs> <laughs>